The pursuit of happiness is all about living the best life. That might mean studying hard and doing lots of cool things. Or maybe working hard and buying many items. Maybe even a mix and then starting a family. Are you getting the idea? The game takes a while to set up. Maybe 10 minutes if you don't keep things separated beforehand in baggies. There are so many cards, tokens, and pieces. With setup, take down the game itself Scoring and telling your stories, this is definitely a weekend game. Give yourself 90 minutes and maybe more when you're first learning how to play. You're going to start with a child trait, which changes the amount of knowledge, creativity, and influence tokens you start with. It has another ability that makes sense depending on the trait and gives you bonuses during the game. These are kind of like a variable player power mechanism because it makes sense to play the game based on these child traits. There are also life goals which are put out randomly at the beginning of the game. You work toward these and they can give really great rewards. For example, the player with the most completed projects will earn some long-term happiness which is the scoring system for the game. Once you're all set with tokens, grab your hourglasses. Then, put your colored cubes on the stress, short-term happiness, and long-term happiness tracks. Short-term happiness helps with the projects and changes the first player each round. The game is actually super simple to play. On your turn, you'll put an hourglass on an action and collect the resources. This mechanism is called worker placement, and it's one of the most popular in modern board games. Each round is a period of your life. You start as a teen, put an hourglass on study, play it, or interact, which gets you more of the resource tokens. You can also put an hourglass on take project or spend, which can cost time and or money, but can give you cool bonuses. You can also put an hourglass on temp job, which can give you some quick money. Items and activities are a quick way to get a bonus. For example, buy a boat or go out for dinner and get resources. Projects are a little different. When you take one, it'll stay in front of you until it's done. You can advance them by putting an hourglass on take project, then paying the resources instead of grabbing a new car. Each upgrade gives better bonuses. Once completed, projects are moved off to the side. This is important because you can only have three active projects and one partner. If you take more, you add stress for each additional one. By the way, these player boards don't come with the game. We got these fan-made ones from Board Game Geek. You can put another hourglass on a spot, but this will add to your stress. Sometimes it's worth doing this, but if you go up a stress level, you lose an hourglass the next round. Fewer hourglasses means fewer actions. This can get bad very quickly. Once everyone has used all their hourglasses, the round is over. Move the round marker to the first adult stage. Now you have a few new actions available. Get job, Develop relationship and overtime. Get job adds new cards to the board is a great way to make money which allows you to do more in life. It also means less time though because you lose an hourglass each round. I'll get to that later. Relationships also take an hourglass from you but give you bonuses. Overtime is pretty neat. You'll get two hourglasses, but add two stress. Managing stress is very important. The way stress works is quite simple. As you move up stress levels, you give up hourglasses. Moving from adult to old age adds stress. Eventually, you'll run out of hourglasses and will die peacefully, of course. Once this happens, you'll score points 
from your life goals, resources, and money. You'll add this to your long-term happiness track. The player with the most wins. As you can imagine, every player in every game has their own story. One time, my dad was on a reality TV show and was a big bully. He became president but lost his job after one round. Then, he immediately died. He was so far ahead of us, but because the stress got to him, me and Mom were able to play a few extra rounds. Me and Mom were able to move past him in long-term happiness and win. I like the components. They're colorful, they tell you easily what everything does, the art is funny, and the board is great. It's so beautiful once it's set up. The game takes up a lot of space on the table though. It's really big. The first game takes a long time, and maybe even the second game. Even though it makes sense, it'll take a turn or two before you start moving quickly. There are so many choices, and the game will be different every time. There are expansions too that add things like pets, but we don't have them just yet. Most of all, I love the stories at the end. Part of me wants to give it two thumbs because it's really great. Part of me wants to give it one because of the setup. Since the game is more important, two thumbs.